Okay, so we're recording on uh, Jan in January 2023, the fast, uh, and it's a con week of con two weeks of consecration, actually the whole month, but two weeks of consecration to God. And so we today we're going to have a teaching, a PowerPoint teaching on Isaiah 58. And my name is Doris Arell. I'm the pastor of Consuming Fire Teaching and Deliverance Ministries in Sacramento, California. And uh, I'm working in conjunction with Apostle Diane Lestrick and the Saints at uh, Break Free Global in Sacramento, California. We welcome you all here and we have a good word today from the Lord about fasting and, uh, and prayer. They go together. So without further ado, we're going to go to our PowerPoint teaching. Thank you, Lord. So the title of today's uh, lesson is Isaiah, uh, comes out of Isaiah 58, is the fast that God has chosen. The fast that God has chosen. So the prophet Isaiah had a lot in common with our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Lord Christ Jesus. They both spake as God's mouthpieces. They both warned us about a human hypocritical type of fast. In Matthew 6, the Lord Jesus warned us that they fast to be seen of men. And Isaiah, out of uh, Isaiah 58 says, you fast with strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. And I, uh, then they both instructed us on the type of fast that is acceptable to God. Jesus told us in Matthew 6, don't be like them. Don't fast like them. And then Isaiah 58 shows us the fast that God has chosen. I'm going to ask Deaconess to read out of Isaiah 58 verse 4 to go to Bible Hub. Now, if uh, if if any of you um, don't um, know about Bible Hub, it is a great tool for study. So you would just Google your word, Google your scripture, and the scripture comes up on Bible Hub and it gives you all kinds of uh, interpretation. So Deaconess Jefferson is going to read, I believe it's the first four definitions of Isaiah 58 4. Let's go to Isaiah 58 4 so we can see where she uh, will be reading from. Isaiah 58 4. She's going to go to her phone and read. I believe it's the first four out of Bible Hub. And that's just to give you a um, Isaiah 58 verse 4. Isaiah 58 verse 4. Yes, and it's, it would be the first four yeah, in I, in in uh, what 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 uh, Isaiah is saying when he says you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Yes. Okay. And tell us the uh, the the uh, what what kind of Bible the version. Yes. Okay. The first reading will come from the New International Version, and it reads as follows: Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and accept your voice to be heard on high. That's the New International. So the next one is the New Living Translation. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. English Standard Version. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Mama. And the last one is the Berean Standard Bible. You fast with contention and strive to strike viciously with your fist. You cannot fast as you do today and have your voice be heard on high. Oh, glory to God. Well, that's uh, that's the warning, and, and, and uh, Jesus said in Matthew six, they fast to be seen of men, and uh, Isaiah said, your fast, I'm not going to hear your fast because your motives ain't even right. And then they instructed us on the type of fast that is acceptable to God. Jesus said, don't be like them, and then Isaiah fifty eight says, is not this the fast that I have chosen? And we'll get into that a little in depth in just a, another slide down further. 
So the common task, we have to talk about Jesus and Isaiah and the way that they spoke. The common task, the most common task of a prophet is that as mouthpiece or spokesman for God. We just read in Dr. Monroe's book uh, that representation, if you're going to represent God, you better have a relationship with him because representation, if you're going to speak for God, it requires relationship that came right out of our textbook for these two weeks. Uh, Dr. Monroe, The Purpose and Power of Prayer, page 46. So a secondary task of a prophet is foretelling, prophesying, or predicting the future. A third function of prophets are healings and miracles. Now, Jesus having the seven Oh, ministry of the spirit and the seven attributes of God often operated most of the time in the office of a prophet. When he spoke or spake, he spake with authority, representing God's words and God's purpose in the earth. Let's go to Isaiah 11 and let's look at this, these seven spirits of God. If you ever wonder what they are, then today we get a good look into what the seven spirits of God are and what it means. And that is how Jesus operated. In Isaiah 11, 1 through 4. Isaiah 11, 1 through 4. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And we know that's Jesus. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and it shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, his mouth, God's spokesperson. And with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. Powerful. The voice of God is very powerful. So let's look at the seven spirits of God. Number one. So in your Bible, let's go to verse two and circle the spirit, circle rest. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon Jesus. That is beginning with the Holy Spirit. When he got the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God rested upon him. And then circle wisdom, circle understanding, circle counsel, circle might, circle knowledge, and circle fear of the Lord. There you have seven things that you should have circled or yellowed out or pinked out or whatever or underlined. Those or uh, that's what's called the seven spirits of God. It's the seven attributes of God. It's the fullness of God that Jesus received at his baptism. And uh, he operated not just as a prophet, but in all of the fivefold ministry gifts that we find in Ephesians 4.11. Let's go all the way in the back of the Bible to Revelations 4 and verse 5. And let's look at these seven spirits again. And, and uh, so when, when Jesus speaks, just like when Isaiah spoke, they spoke as the mouthpiece or the spokesperson of God, and it was powerful. Amen. In Revelation 4, verse 5, and out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. So you're like, whoa, I thought there was one Holy Spirit. There is one Holy Spirit, but he gives seven attributes. And Jesus had the fullness of them, which we just read in Isaiah 11, 1 through 4. So when we get on the next slide, I believe, into where Jesus talks about fasting, he's talking with the power of God, the mouthpiece, the spoke person of God. Amen. So now let's go to back up to Revelation 3 and 1. 
and unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write, these things says he that has the seven spirits of God. We know that this is talking about Jesus talking to his church, having the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. He said, I know thy works, that thou has a name, that thou livest and art dead. So he came to the uh, his seven churches in uh, Revelation, speaking with power and authority and rebuking and uh, uh, just getting them right, get them together. So when we go to Isaiah 58, Isaiah will be speaking with you as God's mouth. He's not to be taken lightly. He had a relationship with God because he represented God. And again, I want to refer you to Dr. Monroe's uh, book on page 46, where he says, representation requires relationship. When you go before the throne of God, and you uh, develop this relationship, which is wonderful book that we're teaching. We're showing you how to do that. You become God's mouthpiece, a spokesperson in the earth. Now we're going to look at, and, and I, I, I need to bring this out because the Holy Spirit gave us to us. But obviously, we need to know this. So not only did Jesus operate as a prophet, but in all of the fivefold ministry gifts. He operated as an apostle, which you find that in Hebrews 3 and 1, where it says, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, who? Jesus Christ. So he operated as the apostle. And then as a prophet, in uh, Jesus spoke of himself as a prophet. He said, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. And then he said he could not do great wonders and miracles there because they didn't respect him as a prophet. He spoke of himself as a prophet in John 8 and 4. What he's doing here, I'm showing you that he operated in all of the fivefold ministry gifts in Ephesians 4 and 11. And then he operated as an evangelist. In Matthew 4, 17, now we know he evangelized all over the place. That's how he got us. Hallelujah. From that time, this is after John the Baptist died, was beheaded. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was operating as an evangelist. And he operates as a pastor, John 10, 27. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. He is the chief shepherd. We are, I operate as an under shepherd. Uh, uh, Pastor Rhonda operates as an under shepherd. Apostle Diane operates as an under apostle. <laughs> We're talking about the chief pastor here is uh, Jesus. And then he operated as a teacher. John 8 and 2, and early in the morning, he came again unto the temp into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. Amen. So the reason the Holy Spirit brought that out, because this is a time for us to know uh, who Jesus is. And uh, so he operated not in just the fivefold ministry, but the seven spirits of God, the fullness of God. So here in Luke, uh, excuse me, Matthew 6, let's go to Matthew 6, 16, and look at Jesus's teaching us about fasting, true fasting, treasures in heaven, fixed vision of gold, and true riches. These all have to do with fasting. So he's teaching with authority as God's spoke person. And uh, he always, Jesus was always teaching. He always had opportunities to teach. As I was studying this, I kind of connected this at one time together, but he really brought it uh, forth in this study so that we can connect these. So it's Matthew 6, 16, excuse me, Matthew uh, 6, yes, yeah, 16. So we go over here where Jesus starts with fasting. He says, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad face 
a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, <laughs> that you may appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which see is in secret, shall reward thee openly. So there are some rewards that comes with true fasting. So because true fasting, I'm going to tell you now, is where you lay down your life. You're going to see that later. No greater love than a man should lay down his life for his friends. So these two weeks, we should be laying down some stuff. And God sees that. He sees a sacrifice and he rewards the true fasting. He doesn't reward people that go around saying, oh, I'm fasting, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. He don't reward that. That's superficial. And uh, so that's why I say some people may be offended. But see, we, we get the knowledge of God because the scripture is given for us to correct us, to show us where we're wrong and then correct us so we can move forward in the deep things of God. Amen. So then he goes right into treasures in heaven. And uh, he says, lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So the treasures... Uh, that are in heaven, those treasures, let me tell you, they have to do with souls. They have to do with souls, not the silver, not the gold, not even crowns, although the crowns have to do with souls, not the houses, not the stuff, not even me. I'm, you know, a, a, a side line of a fasting, I'm going to lose some weight, but I'm not fasting for that. I'm fasting for some souls. There's some bondages that need to be broken. There's some deliverances that need to be uh, 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 done. And so that's how you lay down your life for a friend. No greater love than you to give up something and get before God and, and pray on the behalf of another person. See, you're not fasting for yourself today. You're fasting on the behalf of someone else. We're going to get into that. Then he goes right into the light of the body. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil or wandering, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? In other words, if you're not single, focus, uh, got your mind, focus on this uh, is this fast is a uh, uh, a fast that we want something to happen for some souls. It got to be single minded. It can't be on the food we missing. It can't be on the TV we miss. It can't be on none of that. Not even work. Even work. I'm going to show you where God is going to have you to, for next year to lay aside your days and use some vacation days so that even the day has to be set apart for Him. And then he goes right into no man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in mammon. Mammon is your job. You, you, I feel sorry for the people that have to work uh, during this fast because those of us that don't have to work, you know, we are, we are really, really being blessed. And I know that those of you that have to work, you're like, oh God, I'm not going to go back to work. But, you know, this is for next time or from fastest in the future. We also, we don't just lay aside our life. We set aside the day. And I'm going to show you that in the word of God. Let's go to Luke 16 and 11. And let's look at the true treasures where it says here, lay not up treasures for yourselves upon earth, but lay up yourself treasures in heaven. The whole focus of, of God's fast is souls. Souls, not necessarily uh, soul winning, but delivering souls. Amen. His whole, the whole reason Jesus Christ came and, and did his, and laid down his life for, uh, for the world was for souls. So Luke 16 and 11. If therefore you have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon, that means 
you know, job, that stuff. Uh, who will commit to your trust the true riches? What are the true riches of God? People, people. We lay down our lives for people. We are fasting for people. And you're going to get a good uh, look at that in just a moment. Now, here we have, now, your, the teacher here is a graphic artist. God gave that to me. He gifted me. And so he uses that in the teaching. And so in Psalm 29, we have to understand when we get to Isaiah 58, uh, that power that he was speaking for as the spokesperson of God. Psalm 29, 3 and 4 says, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Amen. Ezekiel 43 said it like this. His voice was like many waters. <laughs> Amen. Job said, God thunders marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. Job put it this way. Have you an arm like God? Or can you thunder with a voice like his? the prophet spake in Isaiah 58. We he hear the rain. Okay. <laughs> that water, hallelujah. When Isaiah the prophet spake in Isaiah 58 and verse 6, he spake just like Jesus did, with power and authority as God's mouthpiece. So he's about to tell us something. Amen. Because Isaiah was representing God. And when he said, is not this the fast that I have chosen? That's what God said. Remember, representation, if you're going to represent God, it requires relationship. Isaiah had a relationship with God. Jesus had a relationship with God. And they spoke just like God with power and authority. So we're going to go to Isaiah uh, 58, where Apostle Diane Lestrick asked me, to teach from. And I said, yay and amen. <laughs> so in Isaiah 58, uh, we're going to contrast your fast, not necessarily our fast, but the fast that Jesus was talking about that the hypocrites did and that Isaiah 58 said your fast with his fast, which is Jesus, uh, God's fast. There is a difference. So in Isaiah 58, three and four. Uh, let's turn to Isaiah 58, all of us in our Bibles. Hallelujah, because that is the text for which uh, apostle asked me to teach from. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you hear, when you read the word of God, read it, understanding that his, his voice, that is his voice, is very powerful. Amen. Isaiah 58. So he said, in Isaiah 58, verse 3, Wherefore have we fasted, they say, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, Isaiah said, speaking for God, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and do all your labors. You exact all your labors. You just find this this. So true sacrifice requires that you do a Joshua 3 and 5. And a Joshua 3 and 5, we need to go there. Keep your finger in Isaiah 58 because that's our text. But we have to go and see what Joshua 3 and 5 is, which is exactly what we're doing. We're consecrating ourselves. We're sanctifying ourselves for a purpose. Joshua 3 and verse 5 says, and Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. We need to know what a wonder is. A wonder is something that nobody can do but God. I know full well that each and every one of you know some people out there 
that need some miracle signs and wonders done in their life. You, we know people out there that can't nobody deliver them but God. And God does it through the fast. Look at Joshua. Look at it good. Joshua said, sanctify yourself. Lay down your life. Consecrate your life. Why? Because tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So what he's telling you to do is today give up something great for something greater later. Give up something great. Are you still doing your pleasure? Are you still watching TV? Are you still uh, in the Facebook uh, all day? Are you still, what are you doing? What are you doing? You still finding pleasure? Are you still going to work? You didn't lay the day aside. Don't be condemn yourself. We're te we're learning from the Holy Spirit. We are to lay aside the day, the day, because we're supposed to be before God. We're not supposed to be because I know without a doubt, without a doubt, the people that have to work didn't want to leave. They don't want to leave. They want to be where we are. Ain't nothing worse than wanting to be somewhere when you got to be somewhere else. Oh, but next year. We're going to get it right because God is explaining it to us. Amen. And so here's what a Joshua 3 and 5 is. You got to give up something great. Yes, I enjoy my gun smoke. I enjoy my judges, all those judges. I love them all. But I didn't gave them up. They was great. I like them. I gave them up for something greater later. Guess what? For miracle signs and wonders. Let me read Joshua one more time. Sanctify yourself. You can't sanctify me. I can't sanctify you. Sanctify yourself. Lay down your life. Deny yourself. Because tomorrow, see, God honors that kind of fast. Tomorrow, he's going to do wonders. He's going to do the impossible. He's going to do the things that you've been begging and crying. Oh, Lord, they need you living. Oh, no. He's going to do it through a true fast. Hallelujah. I know him. Hallelujah. So that's what a true sacrifice is, giving up something great for something greater later. Amen. Have you truly grieved on your knees before God, not for yourself, on the behalf of others, another soul, or are you still doing all your pleasures? After we finish reading the book, do we go home and, and uh, go to sleep? Uh, because I know we're tired, but see, we sacrificing sleep. Sleep is great. We sacrifice it. God honors that. Uh, are we going to turn the TV on? Or are we begging God for, um, um, uh, Lord, they need deliverance. Lord, they need deliverance. Lord, they need deliverance. He will honor that. Don't still do your pleasures. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What have you given up? Set aside, forsaken, rejected, or sacrificed on the yeah. behalf of others that had you in want. Oh, Lord, I wish I could do that, but I'm not going to do it because these true treasures, this soul that's out there in bondage, deliver them, Lord, that has you in tears. Go with me to Psalm 126, 5 and 6. You're sacrificing. You're sowing your life. You're laying down your life. May not be your friend, but it's God's creation. Amen. We need to put, and I'll show you later, to put some names down and grieve for these folk. God honors. That's his path. Amen. Psalm 126, 5 and 6. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 126, 5 and 6. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for correcting us, Lord. Yes. And showing Hallelujah. us the right way. Hallelujah. Because we don't want to fast and nothing happens. My goodness. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Psalm 126, verse 5 and 6. Look at this promise. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Oh, you may want to sleep. You may want to watch TV. You may not want to get on your knees, but what you got to want greater is for that soul to be delivered. Only God can do it. That's a wonder. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. He still operates like that. And he works with us. He that goes forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed. What are we sowing? We're sowing our lives into this path. 
shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his seeds with him. See, God is not a man that he should lie. He's going to honor a true fast. He honors it. We just have to know what a true fast is. Hallelujah. Have you, now here's one that's going to hit somebody, but you know, the truth will set you free. Have you taken vacation time from work to set aside the day or days of fasting as holy so you can diligently seek God or is it work as usual? And this does not putting down, condemning anybody that didn't know before today that had to go to work. Now, if you work with sick people, there's no way you can do that unless you can uh, ahead of time get somebody to work for you because sick people are sick people. But there's some of our jobs, we can take a vacation day. I will show you that in the word of God. Go with me to Leviticus 16. Hallelujah. Because if we're going to seek God diligently, we can't be at work. And, you know, because I would be mad at work and mad. I'm at work and I need to be, uh, I want to be there with the saints. Yes. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Oh, Lord have mercy. Jesus. I'm so blessed to be here on these two weeks. Oh, Lord. I'm retired, y'all. <laughs> but if I knew what I knew today, I'd be setting aside me some vacation days so I can be with the saints and diligently seeking God. Yes. Not work as usual. You, yes. The Lord said you can't serve two matches. You're going to hate one or love the other. Because your heart is here. Your heart is here, but you ain't worked talking about, oh, I wish I Okay, so we get it right next time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Leviticus 16, 29. And 30. Now, this is about the Day of Atonement, but the uh, fasts are the same thing. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, Leviticus 16, 29 and 30, that in the seventh month, on the 10th day of the month, you shall afflict your souls. There's that grieving and mourning for somebody else and do no work at all, whether it be of your own country or a stranger that sore joineth with you for on that day shall the priest are we not priests did we not just learn that in dr monroe's book hallelujah for on that day the day that you fast because we can make we can take the scripture and apply it to what's applicable today on that day Shall the priest shall make an atonement for you to cleanse you that you may be cleansed from all your sins before the Lord. So when we go before the Lord, we, and we're fasting, we got to set aside the day so that we can diligently seek the Lord, that we don't have to go to work and then be on our break trying to hurry up and get some scripture. No, no, no. That's not what God intended. Amen. Ezekiel 22 and 30. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto oh, my path. Hallelujah. You. Your word bringeth light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ezekiel 22 and 30. We're about to get to some scriptures. I'm going to need y'all to help me. But these here, I got to read myself because they got me real excited. Hallelujah. Ezekiel 22 and 30. And I sought, God said, God said, I sought for a man, talking about a homo, a homo sapien, just any male, female, boy, or girl. I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy. I couldn't find any. They're too busy turning on their TV, doing all their pleasure going to work. They they couldn't diligently seek me. I couldn't find nobody. He said, I sought for them, but I found none. See, because what we're doing, we are interceding on the behalf of somebody else. Amen. We're in right standing with God. And we are, because God don't hear you if you ain't righteous. Hallelujah. He only hear you if you righteous. The fervent, effectual, Prayers of righteous men and women makes much power available. Available to who? To us? No. To them, those that need it, those that need the miracles, the signs, the wonders. So we stand yeah. in, hallelujah. So we stand yeah, in right. the gap for others. That's what it's all about. The, uh, those true treasures are souls. Amen. 
Amen. Hallelujah. And let's go back to Matthew 6, 16 through 24. I think we read that. So we, well, let's go and look at it anyway. Let's look at it anyway. Because Matthew 6, the true treasures, true treasures. Hallelujah. So when we are praying, we ain't praying for no housing, no cars, no whatever. God going to take care of us. Amen. He know how to take care of us. But, but the fast, we're laying down our lives, our pleasures, our labors, whatever we do. We land it all down. On the behalf of somebody else, somebody that can't pray for this, somebody that's going to go to hell if somebody don't pray for them. Huh? Yes. Glory yes. to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank Matthew you, 6, Jesus. hallelujah. He says in uh, in Layton, verse 19, lay not up for yourself treasures up on earth where moth and rust does corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust does corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I guarantee you, God's heart is on souls. We as priests of God, as God's mouth, Pieces as gospel, we have power. We have the power to work with God so these people can be delivered. God can do it just like that, but he chose. To, he don't need none of us. God has no needs. I hate it when I hear people say God needs. No, he don't. He can do anything he wants. He chose to work with us this way. Amen. So that's, uh, uh, we're going to contrast that fast in Isaiah 58 to God's fast in Isaiah 58. Hallelujah. His fast is sacrificial. I showed you in Joshua 3. Sacrifice yourself. Amen. For tomorrow, God is going to do wonders. A wonder is something that you like. I can tell you, my daughter, I had a daughter that was addicted to uh, crack cocaine for many years. And God delivered her just like that. And I was like in shock. And her three sons, we was all in shock. That's what a wonder is. You're like, did this really happen? I mean, for real? Just out of the blue. Did this really, did he? I mean, is she really? And we kept looking at it and waiting for her to go back. And She's still free today. Because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. See, we talking about some wonders. That's what is neat. That's what's necessary. So uh, God's fast is super, is sacrificial. Let's go to John 15 and 13. I want someone to read that. John 15 and 13. Now I'm getting readers. John 15, and I'm going to be done at 1.30, 1 and then we're going to have questions, and I have a, I have a, someone coming to the church at 2, but I will be done with the teaching at 1.30, <clears> and then we'll have time for questions. So John 15, 13, someone is reading that. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for Ooh. his friends. Ooh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Fast, God's fast is sacrificial. Would you lay down all the pleasures over there? Lay it, lay it aside. Lay it aside. Take a vacation day. Take a vacation day so you can be diligent before the Lord for one soul. Even one soul. If each one of us took one soul, if God could deliver one soul. Hallelujah. Because we had a sacrificial Thank you, hey, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Just one Lord. soul that yes, we, we went before yes, us. Thank you, talk yes, about yes, Thank you, Lord. On their behalf, lay Ooh. down your life. Yes, lay down yes, your yes, pleasures. Yes, lay, don't, don't do mammon. If you, mammon, you're going to hate one and love the other. You're going to be resenting mammon over there. I wish I was with the saints. So, okay, we, we got it right for the next year. <laughs> Amen. Yes. We didn't know. We didn't know, Lord. But hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. We already did Psalm 127. The, doubt that those that go sowing with tears, with tears, it, it, it don't feel good to, I can't watch Judge you. <laughs> But I'm laying Judge Judy down for two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'll see Judge Judy in two Amen. weeks after the 22nd. I'll see her. Come on now. <laughs> Amen. Judge, Amen. Judge Lauren Lake, I'll see you on the, after the 22nd. But for these two weeks, I got to lay you down. I got to lay you down. I got to give you up. I got to yes. sacrifice you because I'm going to heaven and bombard heaven on the behalf yes. of somebody. Yes. That's, yes. Ooh, yes. Somebody yes. that's got to be mind and they're saved, oh Lord. This is a sacrifice fast. It's sacrificial. First Corinthians 7 and 5. Somebody read that. Somebody that's married, read that. 
Hallelujah. Well, even Apostle, Apostle was married. But Apostle Paul, you can read it. First Corinthians 7, 5. They can receive it coming out your mouth. I don't want to receive a question. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. First Corinthians Hallelujah. 7 and 5. Defraud Hallelujah. ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incon uh, inconsistency. So here God is saying, give up your married sexual life. That's your pleasure. Give it up. But what? Because he somebody done somebody wrong? So no. Give it up for fasting. And praying. You see that? It's, yeah. His fast is sacrificial. But now you need to be with consent, you know. You just don't tell your husband, you know, we, we're not going to do this for two weeks. Explain to him how serious this is. Hallelujah. And get his consent. And then come together again after the fast. But God said, look what God said. Don't hold back from one another. Except it be for a consent for a time for one reason to give yourself to fasting and praying. You see how powerful fasting and praying is? It's sacrificial. It's also clearly a replacement fast. Go to Romans 12, 1 and 2. All of us could quote this. It's a replacement fast. Hallelujah. You are giving these things up, but you're replacing it with something else. You're not just giving it up and sitting there twiddling your thumbs. Or giving it up and going to sleep and saying, oh, now what do I do? Oh, <laughs> oh no. In fact, you've got this big, beautiful book, uh, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Prayer. You read that and, and turn on some of them uh, uh, Christian uh, uh, shows on TV. Not, not the movies, but them teachings. Oh, hallelujah. Just saturate yourself with God. Hallelujah. Romans 12. Can somebody <laughs> read that? One and two. Hallelujah. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. So his fast is clearly, clearly a replacement fast. You give up the things that you were doing, but you replace it by renewing your mind. That word, you should be saturating yourself with that word of God. You should just be reading every book that you didn't bought uh, on, uh, uh, you know, that sound good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Now it's the time to read them. <laughs> now it's the time to pull them out. Amen. We all Amen. We all got them. Pull them books out. Hallelujah. Now, you can't do that if you're at work, but we'll know for next time. But this is the time. Yes. Get some books on. I got a book that Sister Nona gave me on Jensen Tina. What's his name? I got it over here. Uh, on fasting. I, I'm going to bring it out. I, I got it out, but I ain't read it yet. But I got tons of books that I was going to read. Now it's the time. It's a replacement fast. So offer your body, your eyes, Sit down, your eyes, your ears, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, and saturate yourself with the word of God. And then, look what he said, you, for yourself, will prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Ain't nothing like knowing the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God instead of wondering what time we is, what time. No, this is the time. Amen. I'm loving this. I'm loving it. Amen. Amen. This is rich. Hallelujah. <laughs> now his fast, now, now check this out. His fast, God's fast is purpose driven and specific. Who's going to take Isaiah 58 6? <clears throat> Somebody take that one. Isaiah 58 6. Somebody take Judges 20, 26 through 28. Somebody take Esther 4, 16. I'll take Samuel. Somebody take Daniel 10, 1 through 12. Somebody a good reader. All y'all good readers. Somebody take Acts 12, 1 through 19. Somebody take Isaiah. Well, I better take Isaiah 10, 27. I have to take that one. Okay, so who's got Isaiah 58, 6? 
and we're going to go fast. Hello, unmute yourself. I can't okay. hear you. I'll go. Okay. It is not this, it is not this, the fast of, that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that's, that ye break every yoke. That's the fast. He said, he said in Isaiah 58, 6, is not this the fast that I have chosen? He said, this is the fast I chose. It's specific. Specific. Loose the band of wickedness. Undo the heavy burden to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke. That is purpose driven. You fasting for a reason. You know what you fasting for. And it yes, is Lord. specific. Let me read it again. Because he said, this is the fast that I chose to lose the bands of wickedness. You, anybody know somebody bound in wickedness? If you lay down your life with a true fast, this is where it's loosened. Do you remember anybody with some heavy burdens? He said to undo the heavy burden. You know any oppressed people? He said to let the oppressed go free. And you know anybody with yokes, bondages? He said to break every yoke. So uh, purpose-driven and specific. So when you go pray for them, you pray it out the word of God. And in Jeremiah 1, he said, I put my words in your mouth. And when you put my words out into the spiritual realm, I will hasten to perform them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, you Jesus. Our Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Work, working together with God. Isn't it wonderful? Woo! Hallelujah. Who's got Judges 20? Judges 20. Everybody get your scriptures on that. Don't be looking for it now. You already have it ready to go. Because we quit at 1.30. We got 25 minutes to do this. Judges 20, 26 to 28. Somebody got it. Unmute yourself because I can't hear you. Come on. Because y'all know I can read them all, but I, I don't like to do that. I want to involve folks. Judges 20. I have uh, Esther. I could go back to Judges if nobody has it. But somebody I need, yeah, let's I let somebody prep. somebody need to get judges. Get judges. Okay. Hang on, hang on to Esther there. Okay. And then somebody need to get judges. Somebody, come on, y'all, y'all. Get your Bible for you. Go to the table of contents <laughs> and find what judges is. Joshua judges. Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Joshua judges. Hallelujah. See, my my intention was for me not to turn there, but I'm turning. So if I get there before Amen. you, I'll leave. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, I'm at Judges 20. So I'm Judges 20, 26 through 28. Now, some of y'all go down to the other scriptures and find them except for 1 Samuel and Isaiah. So Judges 20, 26. And it says, now this is, remember his fast is purpose driven and specific. So Judges 20, 26 uh, says, then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came unto the house of God and wept, that's morning, and sat there before the Lord and fasted that day until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offering before the Lord. And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord for the ark of the covenant of God was there in those days. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days saying, saying this is what they were, they were asking God for direction. Shall I yet go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother, or shall I cease? They didn't know what to do. And the Lord said, go up, for tomorrow I will deliver them into your hand. That's specific for direction and wisdom. Know what you're praying for. His fast is purpose-driven and specific. Use the word. He, ought, he hastens to perform his word. You lacking in direction? There it is. Just ask God and he'll answer it in a true fast. Now, Apostle is going to read Esther 4, 16. And this is for wisdom, discernment, protection, and favor. And uh, Apostle could give you a little background on this, how uh, Esther was chosen for such a moment as this. Amen. Amen. Go gather together all the Jews that were, that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days. 
night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in to the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. That That Ooh. is so powerful because she was making a tremendous sacrifice. Amen. Not really not knowing the results. Right. Because she she said, if I perish, I perish. Yeah. But I believe because she fasted and she had yes. everyone else fasting in agreement. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. The king held out his scepter. <laughs> gave her favor. Yes. Hallelujah. Gave her favor. Hallelujah. Ooh. Isn't this wonderful? God gave it. This ain't doors. I want y'all to know this. Yes. It's all the goes. All right. So yes. Esther 416 is a fast for wisdom, yes. discernment, protection, and favor. favor. She said, I got to go in here and I don't know what's going to happen. But I yes. do know something. We can go to our God and fast before him. And he yes. did it, didn't he? He showed did Yes. It. Now, First Samuel 31, you know, Saul, <laughs> the king, died. And the people needed comfort and guidance during the time of grief. You know, when people die, you need to go before God. He's the God of all comfort. First Samuel 31, it's all, it's short. I'm going to read it fast. It's short. Now, the Philistines fought. This is Samuel, First uh, Samuel 31. All. Now, the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilboa. And the Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons, and the Philistines slew Jonathan, oh, not Jonathan, but yet he did, and Abinadad and Malachua, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. Then said Saul unto his armor bearer, draw thy sword and thrust me through therewith, and lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was sore afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, God. You know, when people die, it's very painful. Go ahead and fast and go to First Samuel 31. Verse 5, and when his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. So Saul died and his three sons and his armor bearer and all his men that same day together. And when the men of Israel that were on the other side of the valley and they that were on the other side of Jordan saw that the men of Israel fled and that Saul and his sons were dead, they forsook the cities and fled and the Philistines came and dwelt in them. And it came to pass on the morrow when the Philistines came to strip the slain that they found Saul and his three sons fallen in Mount Gilboa. And they cut off his head and stripped off his armor and sent into the land of the Philistines round about to publish it in the house of their idols and among the people. And they put his armor on the house of Ashtaroth and they fastened his body to the wall of uh, <clears throat> Beth Shan. That is so sad. And when the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead heard of that, which the Philistines had done to Saul, all the valiant men arose and went all night and took the body of Saul and the bodies of his sons from the wall of Beth Shan and came to Jabesh and burnt them there. And they took their bones and buried them under a tree at, Ge at Gabesh and fasted seven days when there's grief you need to just lay everything you can't eat no way you can't eat no way grief and sorrow is i'm a woman of sorrow i know what i'm talking about you can't eat but go on ahead and give it to god fast and he will comfort you so first samuel 31 is purpose driven and specific for comfort and guidance during Times of grief. Go on and give it to God. Amen. Who's going to read Daniel 10, 1 through 12? Somebody got it. I know they do by now. Hallelujah. Unmute yourself. <laughs> okay. 
Praise the Lord. So Daniel, Jared, yes, oh, okay. okay. Uh, yes, yes, okay. Go ahead, uh, uh, boss, okay. please. In the third year of Cyprus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hadaka, Hadakel, then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in white linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of uh, Ephra. His body also was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like a color to polish brass and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Ooh. And I keep going. No, no, no. I just said there's that voice. Yeah, Thunder. that's the voice again. The voice of his words. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> like the voice of a multitude. Yeah. And I Daniel alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them. So that they fed, I mean, fled to hide themselves. Therefore, I was alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for mm -hmm. my uh, comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. All the way to 12. Yes. Okay, yet heard I the voice of his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before Ooh, thy God. Jesus. Thy words were heard, and I am <laughs> come for thy words. Hallelujah. So Daniel... He Lord understood Jesus. the thing, but it bothered him. He wanted a deeper understanding. You want to hear clearly. When you want to hear clearly from God, fast. Purpose to chasten yourself, to lay down some things. He said, I didn't eat any pleasant things, uh, no pleasant bread, neither did flesh or wine come in my mouth. I didn't anoint myself for three, for 21 days. But look what the angel said when the angel finally broke through, because this is spiritual warfare. He said, Daniel, from the first day that you did set your heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy mm. words were heard and I came from that first day. So mm. understand God's fast is powerful. We just have to understand what it is. Yes. Now we're going to go over to Acts 12, 1 through 19. Anybody ready to read that? I'll read that. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Uh-huh. Herod kills James. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, 
and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. Then the angel said to him, Gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, Put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard posts, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the mm. Jewish people. So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. But they said to her, you are beside yourself. And she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is his angel. Now Peter continued knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But motioning to them with his hand to keep silent, he declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go tell these things to James and to the brethren. And he departed and went to another place. Then as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. But when Herod had searched for him and not found him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Whoa. Now here... The, the point of this is deliverance. When yeah. you pray for someone's deliverance, I want you to believe that God is able. Don't get into disbelief like these Christians that was praying. They was praying uh, 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 prayer. Verse 5 say they prayer was made without ceasing yes. of the church unto God for him. But then when the miracle, the sign and the wonder, well, actually it was a wonder that happened, they didn't believe it. Yes. So they when you're praying for deliverance, understand that God is able to do this. Yes, so he whoever's is. name you got on your list, I want you to get into Acts 12, 1 through 19, and just like you delivered uh, Peter, the chains, break every chain, break every chain. Yes, yes, Lord. yes, hallelujah. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. This is how you got to pray. And fast. See, fast bring you closer to God. See, if you eating and stuff and exactly how you're praying, you, you're not going to be as sensitive to God. See, I'm, I'm so sensitive with what, for what he done to, to people. Now, they pray without ceasing, but then the girl tried to tell him, and they say, you're crazy. You mm -hmm. must have saw his ghost. But what you praying for, for? And then believe that the man goes, oh, Lord, have mercy. Come we got to get this. <laughs> we got to get yes. it. We yes. got to get this. Now, now look at, uh, look at uh, uh, <laughs> verse 16. But Peter continued knocking. And when they finally opened the door, they saw him. They was astonished. See, because God did a wonder. That's called a wonder. Wonders astonished. You're like, what? You're kidding me. I mean, they done killed all. They killed James. Who they killed over there? They killed James, the brother of John. I don't know who else they killed, but they were killing Jews about that time. And they had Peter in a chain, but it, every chain was broken yes. because Hallelujah. of the prayer. Because of the prayer. But stay in belief. Know your God. Amen. And so they was astonished. If you look up wonder, you'll find astonishment. It's just like when he when he delivered my daughter. We was me and them boys. We couldn't believe it. I mean, it's really he really did this thing. Wow! And one more. Look at verse seventeen. He brought him out. He said, "The Lord had brought him out." Y'all see that deliverance all day long. Yes. He brought him out. You can pray, say, "Lord, bring him out," and pray His word because again, if you pray His word, He will hasten to perform His. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Yes, now, we, Lord. 
We got one more scripture, and I'm going I'm to read that one because I tell you, Isaiah 10, 27, I'm going to read this one here. Oh, yeah. Because Hallelujah. I know what destroys the yoke. It's the anointing. Be praying yes. specific for the anointing. A Lord, send yes, the Lord. yoke destroying, not broken in this case, because somebody could put that back together. The yoke destroying anointing. Hallelujah. Yes. Isaiah 10. We need that yoke destroyed. And the chain broken. But the yoke that the devil had on their back, destroy it. Hallelujah. And it's going to take the anointing of God. It's going to take you laying down your life for a friend. Isaiah 10 and 27. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden, talking about the devil's burden, that he got yokes and burdens all on people, shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed. Why? Because of the anointing. The anointing comes from God. That's what we need. We're being perfect, purpose-driven, and specific. Now, there were special 40-day fasts uh, that Moses, Elijah, and Jesus did. These fasts were spirit-driven and was done because of their calling from God. I don't advise it. <laughs> Amen. Right. I'm talking about... I'm talking about the. I'm, I'm going to come off a of PowerPoint now. I'm I'm talking about fast that we can lay aside. We can lay aside a, a, a one day, two day fast to evening, a three day. We can do it, Amen. But that's the comparison. That's what when Apostle asked me, she said, "I want you to teach on Isaiah 58." I I just went on before the Lord. Give it to me, Lord, because you. <laughs> yeah. You know exactly what we need, and He's yes. giving it to. Me. And so we thank God for his word. It is now 1.30. Now, for the questions, I'm going to stop the recording. But I, what I want to say is that uh, God is so wonderful. His ways are higher than our ways. And uh, what we we did, we, 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 we're doing great. I think we're doing great. But we could do greater. Amen. We could do better. Yes. We, we'll take a, a vacation day in a minute to go to Tahoe to uh, Disney World, what is all that going to benefit you? You know, let's let's take a vacation day so we can diligently be with the saints because yes. Apostle Diane, yes. uh, all of you ladies, we just, I'm telling you, we just enjoy it ourselves. But there's some yes. of us that can't here today because they got to work. And and I know they're missing it. I know they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So yes. We just lay it aside, Amen. I'm gonna turn it over to. I'm going to uh, stop the recording at this point, and uh, uh, then uh, God bless you all out there in YouTube land, Amen. Let's fast, uh, God's fast, the fast that breaks every yoke that destroys bondages in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Yeah. I am now turning it over. I'm, I'm stopping the recording and turning it over to our Apostle Diane Lestrick in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Wow.